James Taylor. Hi, it is the last part of June of 2020. The year that wasn't <laughs> very fun. Anyway, my name's Heidi. If, if I you skip the intro or whatever, I am a third grade teacher. And I'm a mom and a wife and a uh, hopefully a good human being. Which means I wear my mask when I go places. Because it's uh, the year of the virus, COVID-19, but it's 2020, but it started in 19, so that's why they call it the COVID virus. Anyway, at this point, I am driving over to a gathering, a six foot apart gathering of parents and students so we can actually sign yearbooks and view an end of the year video of pictures of everybody of the few field trips we went on. Our school, where I teach, it's a kindergarten to eighth grade school. It's a public school. And parents are highly encouraged to be involved, which means they're involved. And that means we get to do overnight field trips and we get to do 10, actually in third grade, 10, 10. And one of those 10 field trips, this is an overnight field trip to Calaveras Big Tree State Park. And then we go up to uh, Sonora to a camp it's called Sierra Outdoor School. You can look that up. And we do a three day, two night over trip there. And it's just lovely. It's way loud. Um, anyway, so we didn't do any of that. None of it. We did three, four field trips this year, four, which is really not much for our school like ours. And uh, like most schools, we just didn't do anything after March 13th. So um, that, that is what it is. You know, I have to kind of. Take, the, take, take it for what it, it is. But needless to say, that means we had fewer pictures for this video. And I've never done an end of the year video. I've never done even this sort of thing. I don't know much about all this, but I'm trying. I'm trying to expand. You know, I've been teaching a long time. I can't believe I can say that now. I've been teaching about, it'll be my 26th year of teaching coming up. But I'm trying to stay relevant. What? I'm trying to, you know, trying to keep up. So, uh, I'm trying to understand technology. I'm trying to bring my game. I started a class today um, online, you know, for the Google Chrome, to, to, not Google Chrome, Phonus has a program that I sort of tried to use for the last three months of school that I'm really gonna have to use when school starts. I'm just assuming we're starting digitally, uh, distant learning, which means I'll do a lot of small group work because the whole group work, didn't, most teachers will say that that was impossible. The younger the kid, the, the shorter time that they have in front of a screen to be effective. So, um, that's where I am with all that. I'm just going to try to make the most of my summer here by taking that class. It's probably going to take me about a month, I think, to get through because just like my students, I don't have a big uh, attention span. So I can sit in front of my computer for probably 40 minutes, which I know for a middle-aged lady, that, that should be fine. That's hard for me. Um, but I, I started it today and I'll, I'll continue with that. But getting back to what, what I'm doing tonight, I can't wait to see everybody. I'm not, there's not going to be very many people that come because we've all been told to distance our, sorry, distance ourselves. And a lot of parents are just going to keep their kids home, which is, I think is very smart. But a lot of parents wanted to get together to do this. They have to physically pick up their yearbooks. But I went ahead and shared this video I'm going to show tonight online to everybody. Actually, no, not everybody. Just, just several parents, but it's, everyone's going to be able to open it tonight at 7 o'clock. I said it like that. So everybody will get it eventually. And it's just fun. It's about 16 minutes worth of their kids and some of them. But, you know, it reminds me how much I love my job. Love what I do. Love what I do. Mm. Just so fortunate to be in this place with a good supportive staff and my my administrator is wonderful. He's a great guy and he gets it. And he was a teacher not too long ago, so that's important for this story. He's not one of the people on the dark side because I've worked for them before. That's hard. So, anyway, I'm going to try to, to, to post some videos this summer just so people will know what do teachers do in the summertime. Um, and I'm not one of those teachers who sleeps in and um, watches a, a lot of TV. That's not my jam. I wake up about 4.30 or 5 o'clock and go running. That's what I do. And then I, I have a 6.30 th 
thing I do for about an hour with a bunch of people who I really appreciate. And then I start my day. So, yeah, we teachers will be planning this summer. Don't you kid yourselves out there, parents. We'll be doing a lot of planning, a lot of, uh, I'm going to be making a lot of lessons uh, preemptively, making some slides for my lessons, and I'm going to um, use them. And if I don't use them, you know what, I'll be able to maybe give them to a sub on a day that I can't work. Who knows? But I'm just going to continue with what I would usually start the year with as far as standards go. Uh, not so much the curriculum I usually teach only because it's kind of, some of it's really hard to do that way. But I'm going to address standards. That's where I'm starting. And if you're a new teacher, darn it, that's where you start is with the standards. You don't head over to the Teachers Pay Teachers and pick and choose lessons you think will be fun. Uh, because that's not the way it works. Teachers Pay Teachers is a phenomenal resource, don't get me wrong. But it's not, it's not your Northern Star. Your Northern Star are your standards. At least they are for this teacher. Uh, California, we have our state standards, but I also am going to really try to uh, highlight science in teaching this way. That's my goal, because I didn't teach any science, really. I mean, I use mystery science, but, uh, you know, that's really not teaching science, so. I mean, it is, but it's not. It's exposing kids, so I'm going to try that. But anyway, I'm going to go to uh, one of the parents' house right now and pick up all your books. And then I'm going to show this video tonight, and I'm going to pick this up probably later tonight or maybe tomorrow, and kind of take you guys through a day uh, of what teachers will do, middle-aged teachers like me, who have been teaching a long time, but still are geeked up about doing this job. What's wrong with me? I don't know. I have a husband. I have kids. I have a house. <laughs> I'm enough to keep me busy, but I'm still a teacher geek, you know, at heart, so what are you going to do? So I will... Um, Where I like to sit for this. All right, you guys. So here's the deal. I was able to uh, um, prep uh, an entire two units of math using Google Slides. So I'm pretty excited about that because I'm not, you know, thank God for their teacher YouTubers because I'm not techie like that. But I'm learning, right? I'm learning. Let me show you something. I uh, teach in Northern California. And our district for kindergarten to, I think, fifth grade has adopted um, Envision Math, but they've sold to Savas. I think that's how you pronounce it. Savas? I don't know. Anyway, so what I did was um, I took topic one, and you can see from uh, the last clip there that I was able to do this one. So this is numeration, which is the first two weeks of school, right? And it's a lot of rounding and things like that. And... Uh, finding the halfway number and all that stuff, um, but there is it's a there's a clear methodology to it, the pattern to the lessons, and so um, I'm going to try this because I'm sort of thinking that the kids, if they have access to this, the, the slides that I made, I can just say you know, uh, it's it's in your Google Classroom. Go uh, open up the, the the lesson for Google Slides for that for topic one, and find that lesson for that day. I could also just print up or post that part of the slide presentation. I think I could do that, give up that. So I'm pretty excited though, because, you know, I don't know, some of that stuff is really, again, a challenge for me, but I have been teaching for 26 years pretty quick here. So that's a long time. And then the last 10 years have been, you know, including technology, but even more so now, like you know, trial by fire. So I want to start the school year with all these uh, loaded. So I'm going to do, uh, in this our math program, this is just like one of the manuals. We have like 13 of these. Um, I've never gotten to topic 16. Each topic takes about two weeks. But so the fun part about this was that, you know, I'm going to do the first three topics and it takes me about two hours to do one, you know, topics. It's two weeks worth, but I'm getting faster. I think if I do the first three or four topics, it'll at least get us to November, maybe in December. And um, my great little partners may or may not want to take over and do a few of these, you know, if I show them. But at least I know I've done my part. And so they can all, they can both use these if they want or they don't have to. But I think if I get that far, I, you know, I'll feel confident enough to where I can um, not have to, uh, you know, do the whole year like that. Gosh, crush your fingers. It just feels good to be proactive 
about doing something, right? Um, and math is so um, tangible. Uh, language arts is so intangible. So on my next uh, lesson I'm going to prep, probably do this tomorrow, is going to really focus on language arts, ELA. I don't work at a school that has a lot of uh, um, ESL students. I don't really focus on that too much, although, you know, about... 5% of my students have been in the past. I'll have one or two kids. But they don't come with those needs, and we have a lot of resources, and there are district for that. So they typically, when they come, if there's immigrants, for example, they are placed at schools that have their uh, resources for that. Our school uh, will typically um, also meet the needs of the child, too, if they, if they enroll in our school, and that's what they want. Because we have a, our program is more constructive learning. Anyway. So, getting back to what I want to do. So, I've got, I'll, I'll, tomorrow I'll probably start, like I said, with language arts. And one of the things I really want to focus on is writing in every subject. Because I really feel strongly that, wait a minute. When I say writing, I mean with your hand and a pencil. I don't mean typing. And here's why. Third grade, second and first and kinder, they, they need that fine motor development, folks. So, I'm really going to be pushing that with parents to say, listen... I purposely don't want your kids, you know, doing the, the, the workbook page just for this uh, online. I've, I've linked them there for you to see, but your kids have the workbook. I want them to write out their reasoning in math, for example, or I want them to write their name, hopefully in cursive. So uh, I really want to drive that home to parents that I'm not letting go of that. That, that, that piece in learning and developing is, is vital to other things. Uh, in the past, I don't think I've, I've done that, but I haven't needed to because we haven't been so tech-oriented. <sighs> A lot of it's going to change this year. But that's where I am right now. It's July. Today is the 6th of July. So we'll see. I don't know. I'm going to see if I can get any more work done, but I've got a meeting to go to here in about 10 minutes so with some friends of mine. And uh, I may or may not get back tonight, but tomorrow I'll show you what I'm doing for ELA. Happy summer, right? Oh, I got a new shirt today. Want to see? Love wins. Life is good, right? I love that brand. But I'm going to just try to stay positive with all this stuff because I just want to be able to show up on August 13th, 14th and just bring Heidi's chocolate. Hat. So probably not going to happen, but I don't run the world. So thank God. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later.